from the city of Beaky Blinders, Birmingham, England, I would like to introduce you to Paddy Dandar. As the world becomes more automated and the robots take over, it's imperative that we build the right human skills for the future. So pull up a chair, grab a smoser or two, and make yourself very uncomfortable. So for this segment of the show, shall we, I'd love to hear which superpower you'd like to bring to the table. Okay, so the the, the superpower I'd love to bring to the table is, I think, is playfulness. Focused Ooh. playfulness. <laughs> like it. Tell me more. What do we mean by focused playfulness? Well, playfulness in general is a state of taking things and, and like finding, okay, what can I do with it? I'm, as you can see, I'm a fan of playing board games. So there is something that I find in that it, that it brings people together. You know, like chess, you know, you put a chess board in it. People instantly, like most people roughly know how to play. And but basically it helps people connect and, and spend time uh, together. But this focused playfulness is... Okay, I'm going to start with another story. In in some workshops or in some training, sometimes I see people doing activities. Yay, let's have a great activity and tell me of your favorite animal. Okay, great. That was a great energizer. Now we'll start a session on, I let's say, pressure pumps uh, for beer. Okay, what has this activity about the animal to do with what we're going to see right now? Nothing, zilch. And for some people, we've spent half an hour on something that's totally irrelevant. Okay, so the focused playfulness is more about bringing playful, sometimes just questions, sometimes just things that will make the people go, oh, you know, and stop and reflect. Yeah. And it can be about a facilitating technique. It can be about bringing doodles, bringing visuals. So let's everyone take a pen and draw in like 30 seconds. So it has to be like dirty. Draw in 30 seconds something that represents for you the great work that we're doing together. But still, it's relevant to what we're going to do because we're working on our team's cohesion, for instance. I think I've been to a few of those meetings where you do an activity that has no relevance to the rest of the session. And I think that's where energizers and icebreakers often get a bad name because people go, here we go again. Yeah. And I, I've even seen some people say, I wish I'd come 10 minutes late. So they missed that part of the, the meeting. Yeah, exactly. And you know, I'd like to, to, you know, I've been invited here, so I'd like to, to try something out. And I know that some people will only listen and not have the video, but it will just maybe explain what's happening. So I've got these playing cards, Paddy. I don't know if you can see them. Oh, yes. A two of spades and one that I can't see. Yeah. Why can't you see it? Because you've turned it around. Okay, so would you? So you've got a two of spades. Would you like to see what's behind the other card? Oh yes, please. Okay, so we've got this one is Queen of Diamonds, and this one is the two of spades. I think. Yeah. Okay. Great. So if this one is the Queen of Diamonds, I'm going to put it behind my hair, my head, and so this one is. With the two of spades. The two of spades. Well, actually, Paddy, you didn't pay attention at all because this is the two of spades. Ah. Okay. So, actually, what's happened is that, what did you see? What do you see here? You see two playing cards, I guess. Yeah. Okay. But your mind was probably playing tricks because you probably expected them to be like real playing cards. Wow. So what does this tell us about facilitation expectation? That often we come in with existing biases that influence us with a certain expectation. Yeah. And so thank you. You fell into the trap. So thank you for doing that. But it, it really shows how sometimes we are so triggered into, okay, we do an activity. We need to have an icebreak or we need to do something. But if we don't have the relevance, then some people, as you say, they say, I wish I'd come 30 minutes later. And, you know, the, it creates, instead of kind of creating a positive atmosphere, instead of creating, sorry, a focused atmosphere, it creates an atmosphere of some people like already being gone. And then it's more difficult to get them back into the training. 
Mm. I, I changed positive into focus because sometimes we can do workshops on a really difficult situation. It's very hard to keep them positive, but it's, it's easier to keep them focused. So, Shanu, I'd love to hear some of your insights into what are some of your favorite activities or focus playful activities. <laughs> Thank you. I would say that the the many activities that I like to do involve people interacting with one another. Mm -hmm. So remember when we did the visual jam together, I, I had many activities in breakout rooms with people just like connecting and doing something together because it helps them. Okay. Online, it's easy with breakout rooms in person. I would just have them in small groups, you know, mm -hmm. because it's easier to speak with two or three people than when you're in a full class of 30 people and it's always the same person who kind of, you know, raises their hand and asks questions. And when you have these smaller group activities, you know, you could give each of them, let's say I'm doing a lecture on Scrum. Okay, Scrum, which is, again, I talked about it in the first session about like an, an agile framework. Okay, and let's have everyone takes a part on the different roles. So one group would work on the Scrum Master, they would review the text. Another group would work on the product owner, they would also review the text, and another one would work on the development team, for instance. Mm -hmm. Now, instead of asking them to make a presentation, I mean, that could work. I still think that it's an bit more playful if I ask them, okay, now, based on this text, you come up with three complex quiz questions. So you, we would have the three groups each time with three or four people. They would go through the text and come up with three quiz questions. And then right after this time in groups, we would have the official quiz. Everyone would play. And then, so for instance, uh, there's a question on Scrum Master. Based on the answers, we decide whether the answer is right or wrong. And then mm -hmm. we tally the points. What's the impact of that? First, I don't need to lecture. Secondly, people will have to go through the material to find a question that is still in where the answer is in the text, but not where it's like super easy to find. You know, if it's in the text, it's going to be too easy. So that means that by doing so, they also need to kind of integrate the material. And when they send the question back in the quiz, since the answer is not obvious, what happens? Yeah, they have to go and find the answer. So they have to actually work for it. Yeah. And, and like every group can like discuss together, okay, what's our answer? And then they come up with one answer that they've collectively decided is their group's answer. So a level of collaboration and agreement. Yeah. And especially with teams who are new to this, or sometimes after six months, where it's good sometimes to reset a bit and to say, okay, where are we and what's our understanding? It also creates a shared understanding of this and how do we understand that and how does this apply to our context? I feel like you and I should pose a question each about the episode so far for people then to do some research. No, I'm only kidding. <laughs> <laughs> what was the name of the card that Paddy missed? <laughs> Great question. And my question, what were the four languages that Charles-Louis had to learn as a kid? There we go. <laughs> Great questions. Answers on a postcard and we'll pick a winner. And <laughs> Next guess what you did? Yeah. A drawing. A drawing. Wow. Yeah. There you go. Charles-Louis is <laughs> going to do a personally signed drawing for you. <laughs> which I just roped him into. I was just going to offer a pat on the back. Oh. Yeah, there's the pat on the back. Oh, yeah. Like that. Yeah. Just uh, a pat on the back. There you go. Yeah. Well, the drawing is nice. I created <laughs> some more work for me. Uh. <laughs> Charles louis is the money man. He's got the money. I'm just the cheapskate who will uh, do the people <laughs> pat on the back. <laughs> and we could tell he's a money man because you can see his chair. He has like a super duper gaming chair. Look at that. Yeah. Yay. Well, yeah, it's it's uh, one of the first purchases I made when I started my company in 2020. So I, I, I was uh, freelancing before, but I started my company in 2020. And then one month later, COVID happened. And then I thought, okay, this is going to take a while. And I had a very uncomfortable chair. So I thought, hey, you know, I've heard so many 
I had many of my friends told me, you know, if you want to buy a chair, buy a gaming chair. Mm. I said, but why? I'm not spending 24 hours uh, uh, playing uh, like networked games or esports. Like, but okay, how much time do you spend in meetings and do you spend online and with the COVID and lockdown? I'm like, yeah, okay. <laughs> so, yeah, that was one of my investments. Yeah. Good. So it's been been worth it. I mean, you know, it's still there after two years. You know, sometimes when we I go I go back to the office of some of my clients, you can see those chairs that even sometimes after six months they start breaking down. Mm -hmm. But you know, like they sometimes they need to buy like two thousand chairs or you know that there's a lot they need to buy. So of course, like having a an expensive gaming chair could be But then again, if they break down faster, this is, okay, now we're going into sustainability and stuff. But <laughs> anyway, so yes, this has been worth it because it's still very solid. I need to be careful because usually when people say that in movies, then the chair breaks down. <laughs> that would be classic. That would be like the best moment in the podcast if that ever happened. But anyway, we we'll hope it doesn't break because that could be quite painful. I, I know at the start of the episode, when just before we started to record, you were like, my chair is so low compared to yours, Paddy. And we were trying to, we were trying to get our heads aligned. So yeah. I think we just got I think, I think now it's, yeah, it's, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. wait, but you, you raise, you raise I the raised, Yeah. I was, I was just trying to make you feel better by leaning forward to make you look like <laughs> the same height. <laughs> you know, what? what's just happening right now is a great thing that we can also do online that doesn't work in in-person meetings. You know, try to adjust your head to everyone's or. <laughs> Absolutely. And then we all look like we're the same height. Yeah. Right? But then what's interesting is some people are closer to their camera yeah. and then like this and we can't see their mouth anymore. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. I can't do that because then I hit my face in here. But oh, and then um, you boom. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But it, it's so true because what's the number one comment that most people make if they haven't met face to face they've been working online for a while they go whoa whoa you're that big yeah <laughs> yes, <laughs> maybe, oh, maybe you're that small you know <laughs> yeah right because they'd be like they'd be doing this and they're like, literally yeah. the same height and they're like we must I've, be the same size yeah i've had a couple of people telling me that they didn't expect me to be so big <laughs> well yeah <laughs> sorry about that <laughs> how cool are you Uh, one meter and 84 ish. Oh God, it chooses a different metric. So ah. I, I do feet and inches. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. I'm, I'm in the EU. So yeah, I don't know how to convert that, but I think it's, it's pretty tall. All right. Cool. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm six foot around six foot. Okay. So I don't know if you're taller or I'm taller, but Hey, we'll, we'll go. Hey, great question. Send us a postcard. <laughs> There'll be a prize. There'll be a prize. This yeah. time it's Paddy's prize. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, no, we'll do two pats on the back for that one. Oh. You can have two. Double pat. There we Double go. Pat. Yeah. Cross pat. No, that's harder. That'll be harder, yeah. I actually went to the gym for the first time in about four years at the start of this week. And I am so sore. So I, I couldn't even like reach across like that. My arms are absolutely killing me. That's why I'm kind of resting like this, because I can't even hold my arms up. That's how painful. Okay, I, I thought you you were a bit sore. Like, okay. <laughs> I thought you were going to say I thought you were like quite muscular. I was going to go, wow, that that was good. In two days, I'm like, you know, really feel down. But, yeah, yeah. Well, the thing is, uh, yeah, with the t-shirt, I'm not really see. But you know. If we ever meet in person, and we, I'm sure we will do, I will, I will tell you how, I, yeah, no, wait, that will sound wrong. Oh, you, you are muscular. <laughs> no, so I will not do that. So you see, this is focused playfulness. <laughs> playfulness, but I don't know if it's focused, but yeah, out of focus, yeah. playfulness. Out of focus, yeah. It's been an absolute pleasure. I know this episode has just been like one laugh after another. I've really enjoyed it. Just going back to my initial intro at the very first part of this podcast, I mentioned how I say happy and bouncy all the time is surrounding myself with positive people. Hopefully that's come across in these two episodes. 
I have to say, I love these conversations is one of the reasons I do this podcast. It's not for fame. It's not for selling stuff. It's not for any of those reasons. It's actually for my own learning selfishly, because I learn a lot from my guests, but also to walk away feeling good from the conversation. And you've certainly done that today. So thank you so much, my friend. Thank you, Paddy. Thank you for having me. And, and thank you, everyone here who's listening to this podcast also for tuning in.